Hello there, it's uh, Andy the Button Pushing Monkey. Uh, I've been messing around with some uh, render engines lately and taking a break from the body project uh, only because um, there's quite a few of them that are available to Blender and I wanted to know what would work best for my workflow, what I liked better looking wise but anyway I ended up doing a bunch of little tests here and there and and they're not nothing too significant they're pretty simple just looking at the differences and on the way that different render engines actually um, handle uh, certain situations and um, I gotta say I only did just a few tests this isn't like anything like super super duper scientific try to set up each one of the scenes the same way or at least really really similar to one another I'll explain some limitations on each each step that we go but right now um, let's just get into it um, so we're taking a look at some minor render comparisons like I said before we're taking a look at cycles in blender 2.79 already on pro render I think 1.3 I did some tests with and 1.4 which is the current version at the time of this recording and RenderMan 21. I believe I'm actually using RenderMan 21.5. Uh, so RenderMan 21.5 doesn't really play well with Blender 2.79. It crashes a lot, um, but it does work relatively well with 2.78. So if you have an older version of Blender loaded up, you can use RenderMan 21.4 and 21.5 with that and not really have as many problems. They just get to be really big annoyances. Um, so <clears throat> in our comparisons, what we're going to look at is first is a diffuse environment test and the noise level that comes from this diffuse environment. And what I mean by a diffuse environment? Well, basically it's just a plain environment that is slightly um, uh, off white. It's not a complete white environment and that's the only thing that's lighting the scene. There is no HDR map or anything like that. So it's a pretty boring thing. And I chose a particular object that I had just stuffed in a library somewhere. It was like a modeling practice to see if I could fit things together and modeling practices and stuff like that. Big deal. But it ended up being a pretty good object for this test. So first one, what we have up is cycles. Uh, we did, uh, basically what I did is I set up each render um, to do only 256 samples and just using this background color and I matched the background color and I used and I matched all the diffuse colors in, in all of them as well because Blender is really awesome and that you can control C control V almost any value across and really you don't really have to reset up anything so much with some one exception um, as far as uh, you know, camera angles and lighting and stuff like that, you just go to your drop down list and pick a new render and then hit F12 and there you go. Um, so cycles with 256 samples with this little uh, diffuse scene, this uh, diffuse lighting scheme that I have going on here, has pretty good uh, shape definition. Uh, it's got pretty good uh, darkness around the areas where um, there is uh, an interface here. It's pretty dark. Uh, there's noise that's going to happen around here, and it's important to point out that I did these with with no denoising whatsoever because uh, Radeon Pro Render doesn't have denoising as far as I know yet. Uh, I think they may be working on that type of thing um, to implement it, but I didn't use it for Cycles and I didn't use it for Render Man. Um, I can tell you though that Render Man's denoise is better than Cycles. Uh, I, I think it's just about how they go about denoising that makes it a little bit better but sometimes the artifacts are similar but anyway we're looking at this uh, cycles render and you know it's pretty decent given uh, you know this minimalistic type of render the next one is Radeon Pro render and that's 256 samples as well and as you notice that once I went to the next slide uh, the shadow depth got a little bit well deeper there's more shadows in there there's uh, um, it got darker in the areas underneath under here and uh, we have a little bit more darker areas under here and it kind of separates the, uh, the the object from the background since they're, they're very close in value 
uh, and I do that on purpose, just because I'm basically testing shadow depth and noise as well here. Uh, there is a little bit less noise. If we were to uh, zoom in on this part here, there would be a little bit less noise, but not very much. Not much at all. Um, the variance, the pixel variance between cycles and, and Radeon Pro Render in this example really isn't all that significant. Uh, but I do like to increase shadow depth. If I go back one slide, you see what I'm talking about, go back and forth. Um, and so the next one I went ahead and I did with did the same render with render man Ooh, and there's a lot more shadow depth what I like about render man is that it's lighting fall off and it's shadow depth and how it um, calculates shading and stuff like that is so friggin cool I have to admit it, it's it gives it just a nice nice look right away except for in these areas that are beveled around the edges around this part here um, that almost looks artifactual, but it really pulls out the object, really gives you an idea. There's even a darker spot under here, um, but it really pulls this object out away from everything. But you'll notice that there's a hell of a lot more noise around everything. It's a straight, you know, forward path tracer. The algorithm, I believe, is similar to the one that uh, or Cycles uses, or Cycles uses the one that's similar to RenderMan. Um, but there is quite a bit of noise going on in here. And so, when we take a look at the variance and the noise and, and seeing that it takes, a, you know, 256 samples to get to this level, but Radeon Pro Render doesn't quite have as much noise, and then we look at Cycles, has a little bit more, but doesn't have as much shadow depth. I, I do love RenderMan shadow depth, but it does take a little bit to um, resolve that noise. And if you're using denoising, it takes a little bit longer than Cycles. Cycles does it on the fly, as it does so many tiles or whatever in your render, it'll go back and it'll hit those tiles again to denoise them on the fly in little chunks. RenderMan kind of reloads some uh, extra variance images that are in the background and compares all those images together and then tries to denoise it. And it's not exactly like blurring the image. Um, Cycles looks like it takes more of a blurring type of approach to things. RenderMan doesn't. It's, it's some sort of uh, a comparison between uh, all three images. But anyway, it does take a lot longer to do. And RenderMan is CPU only. And <clears throat> Cycles does render faster and denoise faster than RenderMan. However, RenderMan's results end up being um, slightly better to crazily better <laughs> than Cycles, depending on the situation. The cycles isn't a slouch by any means, and it's improving all the time. It, it's still, you know, render and development. RenderMan has 20 years, but um, it's not GPU accelerated yet until RenderMan 22 comes out next year. And I think they're going to call it RenderMan XPU. Um, and, and so that should speed up some things and make it competitive with the rest of the market. I believe they're, they're taking an OpenCL approach to this. Uh, excuse me, getting a little something <clears throat> stuck in the throat. So anyway, what I found out is that Cycles is good distribution of light. It's, it's got relatively uh, low noise for this particular situ situation. Uh, again, Radeon Pro Render has a little bit more shadow depth. Uh, it, it just brings the object out of the background a little bit more. It has less noise, but not appreciably so in this example. And Render Man has more shadow depth, and it does actually have a little bit more light wrap and fall off and stuff like that. Um, but there's more noise than both of them put together. Uh, so uh, it's going to take a long time, a lot more samples to resolve, and being that it's CPU only, um, yeah, it scales like crazy. You can throw anything at it, but there's a reason why they have 5,500 CPUs to use at Disney while using RenderMan or even Hyperion, which is a new Disney render. Um, you just need all that leverage. It is absolutely scalable. It will render absolutely everything you throw at it. But as an individual like myself that doesn't have a very powerful system um, uh, compared to most of today's top end systems, uh, you can find yourself into a big uh, mess. We're trying to uh, 
um, actually uh, render anything really big. Um, so we went on to the, I went on to the next uh, test with IBL and one distant lamp or a sun lamp, and basically I kept everything as default uh, for all these. The I'll make a note of what I had to change on Radeon Pro Render, but this is just to test. Well, how does it take um, image-based lighting? Um, because what I notice is that even though the image-based map or image-based lighting map, the HDR map that you use in the background, it looks different in each render. Each render reads that particular um, EXR or HDR map a little bit differently. Um, but even though it, the appearances when you're looking directly at it look different, how each one also translates the light and the type of curve to apply to that light um, is completely different as well or how they can handle or calculate it. So the first one what I did is we used an IBL and I left the IBL out of the background so it made it not visible um, and put it into cycles and then cycles did absolutely horrible with IBL uh, with 256 samples. So I'm still doing 256 samples as a straight IBL I believe. No, no, no. And, and then one sun lamp. A couple things to note. The sun lamp in cycles is way too big. Um, I think every lamp in cycles defaults at about the one meter size and to get really good results about what the sun lamp would be like or you know distant light whatever you want to call it you need to shorten that down shrink it down to about one centimeter um, because you won't get harder shadows with a large light source and so right now even though the um, what a sun lamp really shows is a very directional light. It only shines in one direction. It doesn't matter where you place it in the scene, right? All that matters is about its rotation and which way the light rays are infinitely shining towards. But the source size does make a difference. And so, like, you don't really see that there's a sun lamp here. And you see that there's um, an IBL lamp and there's a lot of noise that, it, that is going on in here. And I'm not sure why this is so different from the one that just had um, a plain background, but I don't know if Cycles reads and converts the HDR map or EXR that I use for this the same way as the rest of the renderers. But at 256 samples, you can obviously see that there's a lot of noise involved within this. Radeon Pro Render reads the sun information a little bit different and doesn't have a scaling problem. Uh, it's pretty damn good and like I said this is 256 samples and there is no denoising uh, option in Radeon Pro Render to turn on and it resolves uh, better at less samples than Cycles does. And it's comparative in speed. Uh, the Radeon Pro Render is a little bit uh, slower and I don't know if it's exactly throwing rays around in the scene that's slower and path tracing is slower, but it works on OpenCL, so the kernel is larger, so it has to export all this stuff um, out to the renderer. Most renderers, even Cycles, is kind of like an external application that renders this stuff and kicks back a result. Um, it just does it more interactively than these other ones. Uh, but the generation of all these files and then the setting up of the specific kernel to render this stuff out takes a little bit longer. The cycles being CUDA based and soon to be OpenCL slash CUDA based and, um, in a future version or in certain releases now may not have that uh, doesn't have that issue because it uses CUDA and it's a much smaller kernel and it just routes it to a single device and only has to. But as you can see here, um, the Radeon Pro Render kicks out 256 samples in comparatively the same time. Uh, I'll show you an example a little bit later on where that's not the case. But then you can see this definition of the shadow in here where we see that the scale of the sun is a little bit different here. And the brightness, uh, of course, it, all, every single one of these brightness values dealing with the sun and lighting and stuff are all arbitrary. Um, so, you know, someone at some point in time decided that 100 is at this particular level and then it deviates from there. And when you end up um, making arbitrary values, then 
people will have a great amount of, I guess, disagreement between one app and another as to what that 100 level should be. Apparently, this is Radeon Pro Renders, or the one, or whatever like that. And so, Cycles didn't read this too well. Uh, but you can see that there's a lot less noise around everything else. We have a better defined shadow depth here, and, and there's more noise in here where you would expect where there isn't any direct lighting coming in, and there's just IVL lighting coming in. The other thing that I have to tell you is that if you want to do tests between Cycles and Radeon Pro Render, remember that if you're using environment lighting, you have to rotate your um, HDR maps 270 degrees on the z-axis and blender to match with cycles it's it's 270 degrees off pretty much or 90 degrees the other direction you know negative 90 or something so their coordinate system is just slightly different it's off by 90 or 270 if you wanted to go in the positive values so that's the only thing that we have to make sure that we keep up with and so with uh, render man what we do is we have yet another different <laughs> opinion on where uh, the default sun value should be but we do have some harsh shadows but as we look back at the Radeon Pro render we also have more shadow depth right um, but there's also still that smooth transition between um, certain areas and there's you know, very, very bright hot spot across here for the sun, and then a very dark part under here where it is shaded. And it just seems to be a little bit more towards the realistic side, but probably too hot in the sun side. And then, of course, the noise is back with a vengeance everywhere around here. So, again, cycles kind of struggling along there. Radeon Pro Render not too bad cleans up noise really nice without a denoise function and then render man and so um, this is just the rundown of what I said I think that the default of, on a sun lamp of one meter is way too large because even if we look up in the sky and we had a ruler to measure the sun from one point to another it would be nowhere near one meter we know this so make that make that really small uh, to get your shadows your crisp shadows in uh, the Radeon Pro Render, the lighting is on par with cycles, but there's much less noise. Uh, Sunlamp defines those shadows a little bit more, and I think it's just because of that default value. Uh, Render Man, again, more noise than the other two, um, especially in the shadowed areas. Denoising, not used in any one of these things. So Cycles Denoise versus uh, Radeon Pro Render without, and I thought this was kind of interesting because I used another, I used that same IVL, but I, I let it um, be in the background so that I could line it up right and just show you that, you know, both renderers take a look at um, uh, HDR maps and, and IVL lighting a little bit different than one another. I also moved the sun so that it's pointing from another direction. Uh, kind of helps Cycles out with that. Um, but yeah here we go into it and I didn't use Renderman uh, Renderman's denoising and stuff I just wanted to show between these two GPU path tracers that things are a little bit different so here's cycles with their denoising and denoising takes a little bit of a uh, uh, tweaking uh, really what I've noticed is that it doesn't matter how much tweaking or clicking on and off of stuff that you can do you can still get this blotchy look about it um, and I think they're going to be working, or they are working on the denoising a little bit more. Uh, but you really have to start uh, throwing in a whole bunch more samples into your scene, so that the pixel variance is smaller between the between pixels, uh, this, to really get a good uh, denoising going on and making it making it a smooth result. Um, I also realize that sometimes it's it's a uh, it's a matter of the surface materials and things like that. Sometimes denoising isn't even going to help. Um, but this was just like after um, reading some of the the RenderMan docs to really get in touch with denoising, and then coming back and trying it in cycles. But what I've learned is that really a higher sample count is better when you're trying to denoise things. And so, like, yes, you can denoise an image, and you can you can look at what is acceptable. 
but if you are practicing over and over again and re-rendering and re-rendering, trying to get rid of these blotches and stuff like that, the time that you lose trying to do that is greater than just trying to render out more samples anyway and just taking the hit on render time. Remember, you're looking for a final result. And yes, we'd like to get final results quicker, but then again, you know, what is better? Is it is quicker better or is quality better? You know, and if you keep on dorking around with all the settings within within denoising and things like that and throwing in more samples and rendering longer and longer and longer, cumulatively you'll render a lot longer than if you just would have like set it high in the first place and then denoised a little bit later. So it's not as great of a shortcut as you think it is because you kind of have to help it out a little bit. Uh, but it does do fairly well in other scenes. So why it has such a hard time with this scene? Not really sure. Not really sure. Now we're going to go on to Radeon Pro Render and we're going to look at its settings, which were, and I made sure that the settings were almost identical from one to the other. Okay? And you'll see that there's a difference between the two. A significant difference. Here's Radeon Pro Render. So Radeon Pro Render throws more light in the scene from the sun anyway, and then what it does is it looks at the HDR map a little bit different. It looks a little bit brighter back there. Uh, the value doesn't look too bad, but um, you can see that there's more sun involved in there. There's a lot less noise. There is no denoising in this. Uh, the the noise, the most of the noise that you're going to see is going to be along the edges like here and then up in here which is, you know, it's expected in the darker and darker areas that you go, that's to be expected. Now, I'm the type of guy that doesn't mind noise too much because I'm also a photographer and my wife is also a photographer, so I do a lot of things with photography and, and really editing stuff and, and you're not going to get away from the noise and I think the noise, the graininess of an image actually gives it a character that is more along the lines of photography. If you take a still frame from uh, movies, you, you get to see that noise pretty well too. Uh, the reason why we don't see it too often in movies is because you're seeing so many frames per second. You know, you can see 24, 25, 30, whatever, 60 frames a second the noise is jumping all over the place that it kind of cancels itself out or blurs itself out temporally so um you know the noise to me it just gives it a little bit more believability so it, every time we we read articles or talk to certain people outside of photography or just kind of like uh, getting into photography or they they assume that because technology is getting so good and that it's digital that we don't have noise in images and technically noise is, is a ratio between there's a signal to noise ratio and the noise part of it is missing information and you can't fill in that missing information no matter how much you try you can do little tricks to blur it together which is some of these denoising algorithms there are some algorithms that compare uh, certain variances and try to bring them within a certain percentage of one another but technically uh, you can't really fill in something that isn't there right and and that's the same way that it happens in photography whether it be a digital sensor or film uh, film's not going to respond to something that wasn't there for it to respond to Digitally, the same thing. The sensor is not going to respond to something that isn't there. Um, rendering, same thing. It's not going to respond to something that it isn't there. So if there wasn't a ray hit there or enough ray hits to render that part out, and, no, and sometimes no matter how long you let a renderer work on something, a ray may not hit that part ever. You're going to always come away with some lack of information within your image. But our ideas of this technology getting so good that absolutely everything you get should be just butter smooth is erroneous it's wrong and so I do believe that you know leaving a little bit of that graininess in there isn't gonna hurt you too bad now yes when you do animations and stuff like that when you do it within a, um, a computer generated area it can be kind of distracting but if you did something an animation with this much blotchiness in it, that would be so distracting as to almost make you want to vomit. 
this probably not so much there might be some swimming of, uh, of little small areas but remember there is no denoising on this and it's only 256 samples like the last one so a little bit of noise left over really isn't all that bad the shadow depth and the response to the light and all that other stuff also a little bit better so and like I said, it's really hard to find the sweet spot at times for difficult lighting situations and cycles. Sometimes I just throw up my hands and I say, screw it, and I'm just going to go on with something else. Uh, because I don't have enough time to just um, turn this function on and off and tweak these values and stuff like that to try to get a good denoising uh, situation for cycles. It just takes a lot, a lot longer than if I just would have cranked up the, the samples and just gone with it, you know? And Radeon, Radeon Pro Render doesn't require as many samples and clears up to a lower pixel variance at, at lower sample rates. And so I think there's a denoise feature coming for in the future. It's just not there yet. But I mean, 256 to 256, Radeon Pro Render actually beats cycles hands down. Does it beat it hands down in time? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. There may be a few seconds off here and there. Who cares? As long as your end product and your is is quality, that's all you're looking for. So we have this light challenge scene with the interior lighting, and I didn't put Render Man into this challenge. I'll show you what it looks like here. I think I, I think I can bring it up, but uh, it is a uh, well. I won't even bring it up. There's just not enough samples. Well, uh, no, no, no. I will. I will. I'll bring it up. Why not? Whatever. Um, but what we're looking at here is cycles, and this is a, a, an old, horribly, you know, uh, normals turned opposite directions and stuff, and needing to tweak and fix and stuff like that. But this is cycles, and it doesn't look too bad. With the default values, though, these shadows that were across here weren't even showing up. They were so spread out from here to here in a light band that you couldn't even see them. And I'm like, man, that just doesn't look right, you know, because if this is sunlight and it's coming through there, there should be some defined uh, shadows through here. Uh, roughness values uh, vary between uh, renders quite a bit because roughness doesn't translate linearly across to all renderers. It's, it's, it's weird that way. Cycles did a really good job on getting the transparencies here and, and as well as, uh, you know, the glass. Um, all renders had problems with this area of glass and then um, actually you know when this is layered on top of one another doesn't let a ray travel through that far but uh, you know not too bad considering that I only have okay I'm using the Sun Sky uh, model in here there's no way for me to match the latitude and longitude this is the, the Natural History Museum in um, London. Uh, I think it's on the Oxford University campus. Um, basically the light should be in a different place given the time of day that it is but there's no there's no settings for cycles to put in that type of stuff. There might be the plugins that uh, I think uh, Andrew Price put in there. I, I, I don't know but in order to get this type of lighting across here I also had to add in a sun and so I had to manually tweak the sun to get it to look like this. Um, the pictures that I've seen though, with the amount of windows that we have, and even though it may be very light outside, I've never actually seen this place lit up quite as good as this. So, um, but I kind of like it. And like, again, I didn't do any denoising. We let this go at uh, 1,024 samples, and I think it took about 30, 33 minutes or so to finish. Um, 33 minutes, 24 seconds to finish at uh, 1,024 samples. Not too bad, not too bad. Path tracers uh, suffer from uh, the inability to trace a path successfully out to a light source or whatever through trans or through glass materials because there's a, a, an index of refraction involved with it and it creates an extra bounce so on and so forth kind of not really super technical stuff but you'll find out that your glass is you may be able to see through it with it, the environment but your paths won't find a way out to the sunshine to make this area 
and it gets really dark in here really quick and so then you have to change your glass into something that's transparent or mix it with transparent and a glossy so that you can get a reflection or a refraction and that's with both fast tracers so the next one is ready on pro render and this one has i think a little bit to me a little bit better light response the the translation between the materials are is not 100 percent because there was no way to translate for me to translate them 100 uh, percent these are actually iridium pro render textures and i also used them on this one too they just didn't translate quite as well i kind of did it in a hurry just to put some sort of material on there um, they translate a little bit better here uh, and as you can see that there's some doubling up of wherever this is the glass is uh, you can see that there's a great amount of absorption there I think there's a little bit more absorption here in the glass than what I would normally see and uh, there are some issues with radion pro render that I'll, I'll touch on here in just a little bit um, and it has to deal with geometry cycles doesn't really give a damn about geometry as much as say radion pro render and blender uh, that it, it just it just doesn't but what I can see up here is I get a little bit of extra reflections I like the darker shadows along here because technically shadows um, they define the shapes you know those dark areas define the shapes I am not using the Sun on here this is basically radion pro render Sun sky and you can basically look up any location on the planet and we'll put in the and, and give it a time and stuff like that but you can look up search by name as well and plug that in there and it'll put it in here if you try to put a sun in there like i had in in the beginning it's going to be a pain in the ass to match all those shadows there is actually no reason to use it at all um, but roughness is calculated different even though you may have same values as you can see down here it's not as crisp here but it's the same value uh, so it, it's looking at it just a little bit different uh, there's enough light bounces around uh, these are actual individual chambers on the side that actually have lights in them they're supposed to be displays in each one of those I took those out to see how the bounces could get in there and the bounces got in there really well here um, gamma seems a little strong you do have a little bit of reflectivity this is actually the same color as was here because I just did the copy and paste but its behavior and its response to this stuff is a little bit different so overall from the photographs that I saw this is usually what type of lighting scenario you would have there's a bunch of extra lights up here that are usually pointing to the ceiling which are a different color I kind of just put this color back in here but they're pointing towards the ceiling to try to light this up and get some bounce light down here and there's some more that bounce up through here into the arches and stuff and, and highlight it a little bit better to some dynamic stuff as well as light under here because it's a very dark building uh, but I think the translation that I like the most even though it's really dim in here and it, it's more close to what you would see if you were going there even though our eyes adjusted this a little bit better um, I, I think that this is just too bright and I would have to use a curves adjustment to really get it to where I want it to go maybe some sort of compositing but I do like this because there's a lot of a lot of brightness here where they're supposed to be where it's sun a lot of defined areas here and of course this is a different this is a difficult situation to light anyway because all I'm doing is I'm using what it says down here one light technically that's the part of the uh, um, the environment here or I may still have a light in the scene that I didn't delete but it's not active to light anything and uh, we did 1024 there's always going to be reported one less and so that took 40 minutes so it took a little bit longer it took seven minutes longer uh, but I think I get a better light response from this now as far as the graininess is concerned they're almost comparable I think the cycles looks a little bit less in this but only because it looks brighter and so it kind of tricks the eye there's something that we can do to test the variance between those pixels but I think they're comparable I think maybe radion pro render in this situation might have more noise than cycles 
and we didn't use denoising, but going back to cycles and Radeon Pro Render, I like the response from Radeon Pro Render a lot more. So there are some issues in Radeon Pro Render that I touched on before. There are some l little tiny quirks about it, but it's very early in development. So some of the things that you wish to see may not be developed quite yet, and they will be. But one of the issues was this. When I came across this, I made some text, and I found out that in CPU mode, actually, I didn't make this text for this test. So it was on something else. In CPU mode, it rendered fine, but in GPU mode, it did not. Uh, that was kind of a quandary for me, and that was a bug report that was, uh, you know, sent off, and maybe it's because I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. Not really sure if it, if it does this on, on an AMD, but, uh, yeah, it just didn't work well. Uh, you know, the normals kind of looked flipped, and then I went and I said, well, here's another problem that I'm having, because I have this little pill here, and it's got some boolean stuff in there and, and and it was just quick you know you're supposed to see it at a distance there's nothing really um, uh, detailed about it but it was doing the same thing but my solution i found was to give it a simple subdivision surface uh once you do a simple subdivide it clears up right away you don't need to do a catwall clark just a simple one just to add a few extra divisions in there so that it keeps its shape and then it fixes it so just those things to be aware of <coughs> it has issues with normals and so, er, in other areas um, but you know there's a principal shader coming or a disney type of shader coming there's uh, another thing where you'll have to add in for your color maps an arithmetic node set to pow in 2.2 to correct for the the color gamma that's wrong because it'll come across linear and so you have much lighter textures coming across and you want them to be kind of darkened uh, and those are the only maps that need that is the color maps but they are going to add in kind of like a cycles functionality where it automatically reads a color map or there's a checkbox or there's something that allows you to make that change automatically um, you know there's some things that it doesn't have yet it's coming and they and they they do a pretty good job with turning things around the they are um I think it's like six to eight weeks on a release, but sometimes it seems like it's as short as four. And the last release that they had, they had a four time improvement on viewport render speed, and they weren't lying. It, it improved quite a bit. Uh, so the development team was really receptive to the community. They encouraged the input, you know, help them out. Uh, it looks to be very promising. So uh, with that said, I was going to show you something else I believe let me get over here really quick uh, da, da, da. not that one did I even save it I might not have even saved it because it was so horrible oh yeah I did yeah I did light challenge remember this is render man <clears throat> um, 1024 samples is giving me all this junk um, and I think I mean I like the response of the sunlight in here it has the same type of engine that allows you to just type in a location and put it in there nice tight shadows and I like it, the ability to have an exposure that goes really bright to darkened areas but you can see here in these chambers no light ever bounced in there and it terminated its attempt at doing that after its adaptive some division or adaptive sampling came in it would never resample re this stuff no matter how many samples I did in here it would never come up when I did it full resolution at uh, HD uh, it, it and put some minimum samples in there yeah it would brighten this up but you know after about seven hours and 50 some minutes i decided that 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 wasn't going to work for me again roughness is calculated different from each one there is a little bit better i think a reflection down on the ground that i like um 
and inside the main chamber it's not too bad there are some problems up here that I think that render man doesn't like oops with the with the uh, geometry um, so you know it, it's it's got geometry problems and I think there's some issues with the model up here I don't know there, I think one material is crossing over into another this this model has been kind of a nightmare to try to clean up but uh, yeah this is what you're looking at with render man after I think 1024 samples so not near as good as the other two um, but there were another type of thing that I wanted to show you that was different though that I do like about render man besides this part here this is cycles this is render man uh, render man took a little bit longer but I don't know where this is going to I mean this kind of stainless steel shaft of a screwdriver is coming down in here in this plastic part but the plastic part isn't reflected up here but in render man it is it seems to be a better response I don't know what type of path tracing the algorithm that this is using that allows it to see this but it really darkens this through some sort of absorption property and around here cycles doesn't so much and there's even volume absorption uh, put into here they're almost equivalent the backgrounds look a lot different but they read also different too and onto the object so you know it's just kind of hard to tell which one is correct because I tried to do the same one in Radeon Pro Render and that reflection of this outer part was missing up here as well like as in cycles so I don't really have I should take a look at a screwdriver and see which one looks a little bit better but I don't know if I can match the lighting scheme or not so um, anyway those are some differences that I found out when I'm messing around with render engines uh, you know take it for what it's worth I'm not saying that any one is better than another uh, because it definitely they're not they all have their their positives and their negatives uh, what I found that the renderman is absolutely excellent for things that aren't interior like this you'll probably have to help it out with a lot of lights and extra bounce light type of things um, and that's fine you know and cycles may need to do that and ready on pro render may need to do that but uh, for everything else I, you know it's a toss-up between cycles and ready on pro render right now uh, Radeon Pro Render has a uh, more complicated node setup uh, than say Cycles and so I, I'm liking Cycles I'm liking it a lot I'm liking Radeon Pro Render I'm also liking RenderMan what is the best for you I think it's all situational and it's all subjective so you can't really come up with what is the best or what isn't the best just through these types of you know little tests that we do once in a while um, but it just gives you an idea and an overview of what you can look forward to in each one of these things so you know thanks for watching if you did uh, take it with a grain of salt and uh, keep on rendering